Hello everyone, thanks for joining us here on Horizon. Well, public education is the bedrock of our democracy. Yet, if you read the headlines, public education is failing in the state. And while many of the struggles are certainly complex, others are not. They just take work, money, and innovation. Our Andy Barth visited with both educators and stakeholders on the front lines of education reform and joins me now. Well, Rob, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce released its annual Leaders and Laggers report on education for each state, and Oklahoma received an overall grade of F. It's not the first time the educational outcomes in the state have been under scrutiny, yet a growing number of educators and parents say our focus on top-down education reform is misplaced. It's a constant controversy. K-12 through education. And with Oklahoma standards falling behind nationally, many are calling for change. A quality teacher in every classroom is, is vital to improving public education. We've got a good system in Oklahoma right now, but obviously when you look at the rankings, it's clear that we can do better. Oklahoma currently ranks 41st in the nation when it comes to student performance and 44th when it comes to educational funding. Statistics that Oklahoma Education Association's Amanda Ewing says must change. Oklahoma teachers have not had an across the state pay raise since 2006. And our teachers can go to any other state, uh, any other bordering state, uh, and, and make more money. If, if we prioritize education, if it's the most important to us in Oklahoma, and if we want Oklahoma teachers to be the best and the brightest, then you know we've, we've got to make that clear by compensating them as such. An issue that Tulsa School Superintendent Keith Ballard is passionate about. I think it's just plain wrong not to be paying uh, teachers an adequate wage. If we were paying a better wage, to teachers, then we would not have the shortage that we have. Yet, despite poor pay, Jinx Middle School principal Rob Miller says his teachers are dedicated to offering the best education possible for their students. Every school that I've worked in is uh, filled with hardworking professionals. We don't have teachers who come to school and say, and I, I just want to slide by. We've got teachers that are committed and passionate about their jobs who love kids, who want to see kids be successful. Yet many teachers are frustrated by recent moves away from curriculum-based lessons to teaching to the test. Three, you're going into 32. Because we're so focused on getting kids ready for tests, we sometimes lose focus on we're here to create lifelong learners. And in my mind, what we need to do is be focusing on the skills that are necessary. Content knowledge is great. We need that as a base because kids can't think critically if they don't have a base of knowledge. However, we've got to focus more on the critical thinking, the problem solving, the teamwork, the entrepreneurial skills. And for restaurant owner Sean Cummings, those skills are lacking in today's public education system. They come to me with relatively no skills, can't fill out an application, don't bring a pen to an application. Can't interview, no interview skills. And I'm just curious if, from a school perspective, that's half your client base. What are we teaching half our client base? Well, now aside from Oklahoma ranking in the bottom portion of the nation when it comes to education, the U.S. educational system is constantly in the news for ranking low on a global scale. But the question is, what factors are considered when comparing education in different nations? Asian countries are always considered to have top student performance, but when presenting their test scores for their students, they aren't always what they seem. China tests the top 12 provinces out of 22. They then send in the scores from only the top three performing provinces. Certainly different tactics than here in the U.S. We educate every single child. And if you go to some countries like China, uh, that's not the case. You know, it, there is a separation at different levels along that trajectory. And uh, those students who no longer meet standards are typically out of school by eighth or ninth grade. Students with special needs were not educated hardly at all. And here at Jinx Public Schools, classrooms are a crosscut of society, from those who struggle to those who excel. Like a brain surgeon? That's a good, good job. I've got students here at the middle school who will leave here at the end of the year 
with seven and eight high school credits who finish three years of high school math, who are up through Algebra II, some are up through Trig and Pre-Calc, who have finished three years of a world language already and finished a year and a half or two years of high school science. Evidence that Oklahoma students are not underperforming, yet our approach to education is. Ewing says it's time for lawmakers to make education their priority. Oklahoma can afford it. If we consider education our top priority, then we've got to invest in it as such, and, and you know, we can absolutely afford to do so, and we just need to see that, uh, you know, we need to see our elected officials say so and, and make the, you know, pass the law to do it. Which is why Representative Joe Dorman convened an interim study to explore funding options for education. Oklahoma has not kept up with the rest of the nation. We're 44th right now in per pupil allocations and we're at the bottom when it comes to keeping up since 2008 with the recession. We must do a better job of providing the dollars in the classroom so teachers will have the resources. We must provide a teacher pay raise and we must provide the opportunities for these students to achieve their highest potential. We're in a, we're in a kid business. We're here to support kids and that's what uh, that's what brings the passion. That's why I love being a middle school principal. So what are you looking at now? It's just, just... Now Representative Norman says that education funding is a battle that's waged every year at the Capitol and says he doesn't understand why there's resistance to adequate funding when Oklahoma is one of the lowest per pupil funding states in the country. So exactly what is the state allocating for education? Well Rob, legislators appropriated $1.8 billion for the 2014-2015 school year, but in 2009, right after the recession hit, they appropriated more than $2 billion for education. All right, thanks so much, Andy. You're welcome. Rob. Now some of the video you've been watching came from an Oklahoma Watch forum that we attended. Now they are holding these education forums around the state and in the coming weeks we will bring you an interview we did with Oklahoma City's new superintendent Rob New. Now when we return, an initiative to bring communities back into the classroom.